Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Every Day is Saturday. I'm Matt Stahl, along with my partner, Brad Gatto. Hello, Mr. Matthew Stahl. Well done. <laughs> Today, we're going to talk about football. That's it. That's it. That's the whole episode. Football. We started a conversation recently thinking about investment strategy, and the idea came up of how it's kind of like a sports team. And so we're going to dissect that a little bit. And How is your portfolio our, like a football team? That's what we're going to discuss today. That's right. Yeah. It's basically the same thing. So you're either going to tune in or going to tune, tune out right now. If you hate football, <laughs> still, still stick around. Still, Yeah. There, Give us a chance. Yeah. This will make sense. Before we get into that, what have you been up to? I'm a broken record. It's a lot of the same stuff. It's a different day. My boys did just get through baseball tryouts. So nice. we're going to find out, I think, today, maybe tomorrow, nice. end of the week, I think, what teams they made. So this was always a big deal in the uh, the Gatto household as baseball is kind of our sport. Between that and we I actually, for the first time in my life, joined a golf club. So my boys oh. are going to be able to golf all nice. summer. And they're just super excited about that. So baseball and the potential of golf, although I say that we've had such a great winter, now there's snow coming. Yeah. So kind of went the other direction here in Minnesota. <laughs> backwards. It's all backwards. Yeah. How about you? Lots of futsal, which is just indoor soccer. And we are transitioning to outdoor soccer, which is very exciting. And <laughs> Big transitions the, uh, in the stall household. That's the sport of choice in our household. And I, I've personally been away a decent amount. I hosted a couple of retreats for my new project and... Went on a little uh, guys trip out to do some snowboarding, and so I'm nice. on. A, I'm kind of on a short leash at home right now. Let's put it that way. So <laughs> sounds like it's deserved around a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> so. As a guy that has traveled a lot in my career, yep. I uh, fully understand. I think I sent you a message on yes. one of those flights. The idea I of like. coming home and having your wife basically be like, "Your problem now, man. Your turn." Uh, yeah, I've been. I've been at home. <laughs> Solo parenting for days. So been there, done that. Yep. All right, Matt, let's let's dissect this yep. really quickly. How in the world, generally speaking, before we get to specifics, is your portfolio or your investments like a football team? Or better yet, should I say, why should it be like a football team? Yeah, that's a great question. This conversation came up as we were we were discussing this idea of folks making the assumption that they have this pile of money and we make one global decision, investment decision about Mm -hmm. this entire pile of money. And this conversation was part of thinking about our planning philosophy on the whole. But as we dug into that, we started to think about how comical it would be if we were to take, you know, a, a typical lineman, you know, someone who's six, seven, 350 pounds and put them at that's a big line. Right? That's a, I don't know if that's a typical one, but that's uh, well, so this is extreme. They're the big we're, guys. We're gonna go with the extremes. <laughs> they're the big guys. So, if we were to put them in at wide receiver, how you know how comical those outcomes could be, while recognizing that in the world of investment strategy, we see this kind of thing happen all the time, potentially. Yeah, investments that aren't positioned appropriately, like a lineman split out. At wide receiver. Better yet, the the conversation turned into, what if we took all the guys on the offensive line and put them into all the skilled positions, the wide outs, the quarterback, the running back, maybe even the tight end, and then took all of the skilled position players, the aforementioned wide receivers, quarterback, running back, people like that, and put them in at the line and said, hike. What would happen? (laughs) Entertainment. You know what, though? Now I want to see it. That's pure entertainment. I want to see it. I want to see... Maybe that's what the... Maybe that's what the Pro Bowl should be. Oh, yes. They take oh, all the right. skill position players and put people, them in at the line. People would actually watch it then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Have all these big linemen out there running routes and trying to throw the ball. And yeah, before, it's a different set of skills. Before we get into that, though, we have to pay a nod to Refrigerator Perry. He's not. He's probably the first mover in that space. He's definitely not the only one that's ever done it, but he, he, and at least in my memory, but we're also both in our forties. So yeah, makes sense that he's our first memory of a lineman playing a skilled position. Yeah. It's awesome. Do you remember what his real name is? William Perry. Okay. Just making sure. William Refrigerator Perry. Now, number Played seven. Played for the Chicago Bees. 70, 72? Number 72? Is that right? I have no idea. Okay. I had one of those little refrigerator magnet stickers. Oh, wow. I put on the fridge. It was 
Did you grow up as a Bears fan? No. Oh. I just really liked them. Okay. I, I was a large child. So. <laughs> what? Yeah. Boy, this podcast getting Boy. deep. <laughs> okay. So on a football team, let's start with football. It is obvious that every position on the field requires a different set of skills, even on the offensive line, because you've got center, two guards, two tackles, right? Five guys lined up there and they all have a very different set of, not very different, but they do definitely have different skills, right? The center's kind of primary function is going to be different than the guards, which is going to be different than the tackles. They're trained differently. And a lot of times, I mean, you see it, there are definitely guys in like the NFL and college football that play left tackle. And, but from time to time might move over to the right hand side, but that's not normal, right? The players that have the ability to kind of move between different spots on the line are like the batter that's ambidextrous that can switch hit, that can hit from both the left side of the plate and the right side of the plate. While it exists, it's not normal. So very different set of skills and same thing with wide receivers. There's a lot of wide receivers out there that just only line up on one side of the field, or they're always a slot receiver. They're not on the outside. They're in between the line and the outside. There's running backs that are known for being bruisers. They run up the middle and they're, they're power backs. And there's ones that are really good at finesse and same thing. Quarterbacks, although yes, their primary function is quarterback. There's ones that are really good at scrambling and that's kind of their game versus pocket passers. It's very specialized. I think it's the defensive side of the football, same thing. And then the special teams, same thing. It is our contention that your portfolio, your money should be treated that way. Right. That whoever is helping, if you, maybe you're coaching your own team, you're a DIYer, (laughs) or you have a coach or a team of coaches that they should be coached differently and used differently. And so like it's obvious with football. Size matters, skill matters, speed matters, having hands or not having hands to be able to catch the ball, being able to throw the ball, not be able to throw the ball, that kind of stuff. But in portfolio design or construction, Matt, what matters? Like, what are some of the differentiators? Like, because think about like you're a coach and you're trying to like recruit players or you're trying to draft players and you've got your whole like laundry list of, okay, these are the things that I'm looking for. And an offensive lineman, Size is of utmost importance, but speed is not. Yep. But with my wide receiver, speed is one of the highest levels of importance. So when it, when you kind of have that list of like, these are the things that we have to look after and then decide, do I really want a lot of that or a little of that? Do I want some of this or some of that? What are some of the things from a portfolio perspective that we are looking for? Some of the skills that we're looking for from an investment? Yeah. Well, I, f- I find that going back to what we said before, that that making that assumption that we have this pile of money and we're going to invest this entire pile of money in the same way based on one risk tolerance, I think that's an assumption that a lot of people make. And we want to back that up a couple of levels and say, what is this money for? You know, what, yeah. what, what are the plans for this money? And I feel that that can present some resistance because it's perhaps not a way that people have thought before. So it, thinking about it of, we talk about teaching people how to spend their money, you know, yep. when they transition to retirement. And it's, so you think of now, now, soon, later money, when am I going to spend this money? Or if I'm not going to, then what do I want it to do for me? You yep. know, is it, is it going to uh, beneficiaries? Is it going to a cause that's really important? So it's taking one big step back and actually thinking through what is the purpose of this? You know, when are we going to spend it? So is it now, is it soon or is it later? So I think that's the first, very first step. So time, 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 time is one of the primary things that we're going to, if we're, if we're NFL coaches and we're at the combine and we're scouting college players and they're looking at their 40 time and their shuttle time and their vertical jump and their, you know, all that kind of stuff, their bench press. (laughs) One of the things we're looking for, one of the kind of drills that we're going to put this dollar through your investment through is time. When does that dollar need to get in the game, so to speak? Yeah. Is it now? Now we define as one to two years. Does this dollar have to go into the game in the next one to two years? Soon would be after two years, all the way to 10 years. Later is after 10 years. And so depending on when that dollar has to get into the game is going to be one of the primary determining factors in what type of person, in my analogy, football analogy, or what type of investment we need. Yep. The next one is... Tax status. So we're going to be looking at, is it money that's already been taxed? 
Is it money that has not yet been taxed, pre-tax money, or is it money that grows tax-free? So I call those three tax buckets pre, post, and free. And that's going to be a large determining factor for us of how the money could or should be used or should be invested and deployed. So we've got time, number one. We've got taxes, number two. Number three, it'd be nice if it started with a T, wouldn't it? It would. Yes. I mean, we could say he's free, but we can't do that. I don't have anything. To risk? (laughs) To risk. (laughs) (laughs) To risk? (laughs) Or not Not to risk. risk. I think that works. Yeah. To risk or not to risk. Okay. But if if you think about... If if there's money I'm going to spend within the next two years, the amount of risk I'm going to take with that pile of money should likely be much different than money either I'm going to spend in ten plus years or perhaps never. You know, yeah. whether that's for my my investment time frame or for a beneficiary's time frame, the amount of risk in those two is it should look a lot different. Yeah, and risk is relative to time because. Risk is so in a now bucket or a soon bucket can be very detrimental, whereas risk to a later bucket is far less detrimental. This is no different. Again, I'm I'm going to kill off this football analogy by the end of this podcast episode. If I'm bringing on a player onto my team and they have amazing skills, but their personality is not great, right? They've got some off the field issues, if you will. I'm taking a risk there, but I have to decide if the the risk is worth the reward, the potential reward of having this skill of a player on my team. But along with that player comes this risk. And then there's the super boring players where you're just like, okay, yeah, this guy's a a blue chipper, so to speak, or he's just, his upside isn't as good, <laughs> but solid guy. I know exactly what I'm going to get with this player. And so there's certain times on your team, you need people that have that high ceiling, but I've got risk associated with it versus the ones where it's just like, I know exactly what I'm going to get. You're never going to be a 10 out of 10, but. It'd be a solid I, seven. Yeah. <laughs> I'll take seven. I'll show, day. You'll show up. <laughs> so we got time, taxes, and to risk. <laughs> <laughs> and one of the other things that we're going to be looking at at our investment combine is if we need income or growth, is this is the primary purpose of this dollar going to be just to grow it and take that dollar and turn it into two dollars or three dollars, or is the primary thing to be to spend it? Is this meant to be spent? And so, what are we trying to get accomplished there? So, income versus growth. So, we really have four kind of drills at our investment combine that now, we put like the vertical jump. Sure. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now I'm putting you on the spot. So time is. What drill? I would say the 40-yard dash because that is a 40 time dash, skill. 40-yard yeah, dash. For sure. Okay, time. Taxes. Bench press. Okay, I don't <laughs> get that one. I would say taxes is probably the uh, shuttle drill. What is that called? The Where they have to go to the side oh, to side? Back, yeah. The cones? I don't know what it's called. Because but... I feel like taxes is like a ping pong game like that where you're just like oh, running yeah, back yeah. and forth. That's true. Adaptable. You have to be able to adapt. Yeah. And innovate. Risk. What drill is that? That's their that's their off that's their background check. <laughs> it is. It's exactly what it is. What did you do in college or what did you not do in college? <laughs> and then income and growth is vertical jump, obviously. Vertical <laughs> jump, obviously, duh. <laughs> Just made that up on the spot. Time taxes to risk and <laughs> income and growth. So these are the drills that we're going to put the money through. Once we put it through those drills, now we have a general sense of what that dollar needs to do, right? Where it belongs and what skills we're looking for. Then we go to the field of players that is out there and decide who fits where on the team. And you guys, there's so many different things you can look at when it comes to this side of the table, whether it's an equity position or a debt position, what, what asset class it belongs in, whether it's a domestic investment or an international investment, whether it's a private or a public investment, whether it's growth oriented or value oriented, if it's liquid, if it's not liquid, if it's a small company, a mid-sized company, a large company, a mega sized company, what sector of the market it fits in, the list goes on and on. There are just so many different players that can be in the game. None of them are good and none of them are bad. Looking at any of them and going, hey, that guy's, you know, six, seven, three fifty, he's a terrible wide receiver. Sure. 
but that's not what he's built for. Right. He's built to do something completely different. And so they all kind of have their place. And so it is not our job to look at the different skills of the football players and say they belong in football or they don't. It's just that where on the field do they belong? Yeah. I think another another real valid point to think about is just because you set your team, a football team, that's not going to, as we know these days, people are moving around all the time. Players are moving around all the time. So you you don't just set it and that's what it is. It's something that's going to be constantly changing or adapting. You know, we're this player's going away. We're looking for a new player, depending on what's happening around us. So just like a football team is an ongoing, evolving thing, mm -hmm. so is our strategy. Risk versus non-risk could be offense and defense. Are they on the offensive side of the ball or the defensive oh, side of the ball? To risk, you mean? To risk, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of analogies here. The point we're trying to get across in this podcast episode is pretty simple. There is no such thing as good products or bad products, good players, bad players. It's just as a as a coach, one of some of the best coaches out there in any sport are the ones that can get the most out of their players, which a lot of times has to do with the right fit. Are they in the right spot on the field? Are you utilizing their set of skills and their set of talents to the best of the abilities that they have? and getting the most out of them and just knowing when those players should be in the game and which ones shouldn't be in the game at that point in time. Cause there are definitely times where certain investments don't belong in your life because right. their skill set doesn't fit your certain circumstance or situation, whether we're looking at the time side, the tax side, the to risk side and the income or growth side. So at the end of the day, it's important to understand you need diversification of these things, all time tax risk. I can't keep doing it. <laughs> And income and growth. The other analogy I've been thinking of this whole time, and I just have to put it out there to confuse everybody, is golf. Because I was thinking, I was going to make the analogy of like team sports versus individual sports. And we need your portfolio to work as a team sport. But the analogy does work, in, in at least in golf anyway, as an individual sport, in the fact that you have 13 clubs in your bag. And mm, it's true. Although you're out there and swinging at the same ball every time, well... Not if you're me, it's 12 different balls throughout the round as you keep losing them. But you have to use different clubs depending on the situation and they all serve a purpose, right? There's a reason you have so many different ones because every time you hit a shot, the next shot's going to be different. Yep. You almost never hit the same shot in golf. You have to look at the circumstances around you. So it does work in golf. Anything you want to add to that? Or I just completely derail us into golf. No, I think it's great. If you named your clubs, then it would be like a team. So if you gave each of them, a, you know, an individual name, it feels <laughs> less lonely. Uh, I'm so good at golf that most of the names for my clubs would be swear words. Yeah, <laughs> correct. <laughs> I don't. Most of my team members in my golf bag, I'm I'm not fond of. You're not because <laughs> they're not on good terms. <laughs> no, nope. I've got maybe a wedge and one mid iron that. Uh, I'm a big fan of the rest of them and I'm not very good at. So but I'm getting my money's worth, Matt. There you go. I pay the same green fees as the guy that swings 72 times and I get a hundred swings for there the same go. amount of money. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully this was a little bit educational and a little bit of fun. That's our primary goal here with every day is Saturday. Know this, that here at Fiat, we are taking these things into account. And so when recommendations come your way, when the portfolio design comes your way, it is being cognizant of each individual dollar and what we're trying to get that dollar to do. And as a coach of the team, how can I get the best outcome? And it's a different set of skills and a different set of facts, depending on what we're trying to get done. And it's important that you understand why your portfolio is constructed the way that it is. So mm -hmm. if that's a conversation you've not had before, or your advisor is not having these types of conversations with you, feel free to reach out to us here at Fiat. We would gladly meet with you on a complimentary basis and talk to you a little bit more in detail about how we get this done here. All of our contact information is on our website. That is fiatwm.com, F-I-A-T-W-M.com. Thanks for joining us for this episode of Every Day is Saturday. Again, my name is Brad Gatto. This is my co-host, Mr. Matthew Roy Stahl. We will see all of you next Saturday. <laughs> Thank you for listening to Every Day is Saturday. Click the subscribe button below to be notified when new episodes become available. The information covered and posted represents the views and opinions of the guest and does not necessarily represent the views or opinions of Fiat Wealth Management. The content has been made available for informational and educational purposes only. 
The content is not intended to be a substitute for professional investing advice. Always seek the advice of your financial advisor or other qualified financial service provider with any questions you may have regarding your investment planning.